why is the interest that goes from? Is this a new interest or is this something that's been ha- haunting you for years? <laughs> <laughs> I am haunted. Yeah. No, it's 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 a it's a lifelong thing. Um, I didn't sort of think of it as an obsession until I was asked about what my obsessions are, um, and I was going to say other stuff like science fiction and um, stuff like that. You know, really really nerdy stuff, which which I'm I'm into a lot of nerdy stuff. Um, but then I just kept thinking, well, I, I'm at the moment I'm writing, oh, I'm trying to write, starting to write a new album. And it's kind of at the moment, the sort of core influence and inspiration is, is an, a lifelong kind of experience and obsession and sort of not always, a, not always a positive one, but yeah, an obsession with ghosts and, um, and just that everything around that really from personal experience from the sort of culture of ghost stories um in different cultures as well as, as our own um as in england um and um sort of having it having a kind of fear of it too i think i think because it's a it's a fear i think it's become something i feel that i can't let go of and a challenge that i'm sort mm-hmm. of finally addressing i don't know if my album will end up being about ghosts but it's it's the inspiration for it so i've spent a lot of time over the last year kind of gathering stories from people um recalling my own kind of reading rereading ghost stories watching ghost films all all things that i've done anyway but just with a conscious kind of thing in mind to sort of build what it is really kind of just like work out what 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 is it about ghosts that kind of plagues me (laughs) but also just that you know there's some there's some aspects to it that I find really interesting that have come up just around kind of people's psychology and um and culture just social what's accepted socially it's 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 a really interesting kind of intersection of Mm. of those things so and what is the interest? Is it actually the interest in the phenomenon of them actually seeing a ghost, or is it, or is it just the way people deal with death and the mystery of death? You know, I don't even think about death. Um, obviously, that's quite a big part of ghosts. But, but for me, it's it's the the interaction. Um, it's it's the interaction that people have uh, or experiences that people have had um, with encounters or, or feelings of places in 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 the now in in reality in day-to-day you know bog standard reality and i think it's the sort of in, interruption of that um the uncanny that, that that always draws me in um i think just f- since being a kid um my dad was really into ghost stories we lived my very first childhood home was was a very old house built on a roman road and i grew up with just this awareness of things being slightly strange there um i didn't grow up in fear um but when we moved later we moved up to to north yorkshire when i was around six years old and um as i grew up in yorkshire it was kind of all the memories of that house sort of were there permanently and i used to remember what things that i've seen in the house that um i didn't really think of as a child as a young child um and then it you know we had conversations when i was a bit older oh, what was that, you know, what was that black dog in the bedroom doing? You know, like that thing that I used to watch when I was when I was a, a kid and I was in my mum and dad's bed um, while they were asleep, just sort of looking around. And uh, yeah, it, it all kind of came came to light later that, you know, there were a few things that happened in the house or there were things that we all saw in the house. Um, and it just sort of went on from there. There were other family stories, my grandma, <laughs> um was very very sort of casual about about a ghost that haunted her house that she it was actually more of a pest than a kind of oh wow weird thing it was more of like a oh this bloody thing just keeps hiding stuff and just won't go and and you know things like that just very day-to-day um everyday life type of situations so it's kind of grown from there really and i think as a phenomena, I think I'm always into into things that kind of take you out of the kind of mon- mundanity of life and gives give you a chance to kind of reflect on the mystery and the unknown. And 
it's just been a thing that I've always been interested in and simultaneously scared scared of too mm. so in in my adult life in, in recent years since I've had my children my oldest is going to be five in May and I've got a baby since having those I've kind of um developed a sort of recurring dream about poltergeist <laughs> and it's <laughs> um it's been kind of growing in its kind of intensity throughout and I think you know it comes with the anxiety of being a parent I think but at the same time they're really clear dreams and they I have had these dreams throughout my life but in this sort of last four years they've just been like really regular so I've been trying to sort of work out what that is and and in the dream it's kind of I'm in this very large house with lots of rooms and there's which is a bit of a cliche dream for most people but it, it, there's always a ghost present or I know there's a ghost and I'm waiting to encounter it or it kind of takes me by surprise and it, it's sort of oh it's this overwhelming unstoppable force so yeah. I've been sort of thinking about that a lot and trying to kind of work out what that might mean. Do you think there's actually an explanation for this? I mean, what do you think it actually is? Do you think it's something that, that your mind, maybe your mind's playing a trick, or do you think it's actually a rational, almost scientific explanation, or is it just good to have it in the realms of mystery? <laughs> it's a good question. I mean probably throughout my life I've probably attributed it to different things. I think when I was a kid growing up in a sort of relatively Christian household, I would have probably said, yep, yeah, it's, you know, it's the afterlife or whatever. And then people, people never die. I don't really believe that now. I don't really have a, a religion that I'm, I ascribe to. I'm very into the whole unknown mystery of things. At the same time, I think believing in ghosts, even talking about ghosts, you know, without a sort of, tongue in cheek I think it's it's hard because I think there's there's a bit of kind of stigma about it and I find that really interesting um you know I, I grew up with this thing that, that was very natural and strange when you f reflect on it but but a real thing and you know um whatever it was it was just a thing and it was just there it was like an echo um for me I I don't I genuinely don't know I I think eventually there might be a way of of explaining it through a, a, a branch of science that we haven't fully understood i don't know if it's like related to sort of you know i know nothing about science but uh, i'm interested in like the whole idea that when you look up at the sky and you see stars and things and and you know the photographs of deep space that's all ghosts you know that's not they don't they're not there anymore that's just the image that's taken at this time to get to us so i kind of think of it in that way um but at the same time i've heard the most incredible stories about encounters with with ghosts with people who have died years prior and you know the person didn't know and they're just really everyday and normal so I, i'm kind of I've, I'm, I'm it's a mystery that i i don't think will ever be solved but i think there are so many people that have these experiences um for it not to for, for it to be a real thing but that but that just you know kind of defies explanation and, and defies you know any interrogation because you never know when or where or how it's going to happen um and unfortunately there's that whole thing of like um you know most haunted and all the tv stuff around it and that you know the kind of dripping letters and horror films have kind of built this kind of this kind of brand of of um believers in ghosts to be very kind of tacky and and you know entertainment which you know is kind of its history I'm interested in the whole history of, you know, seance and Ouija boards and things like that. It's, I find the whole thing really fascinating, but yeah. It, yeah. Sorry. It's, I'm off yeah, sorry. <laughs> so it's, it's more about, um, about the perceptions of reality in a way, isn't it? That maybe reality is not so cut and dried, not so black and white. There are blurred edges. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's more what the fascination is more than actually ghosts per se? Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. Definitely mm. that. You know this you know what we see and what we experience day to day is not all there is thank god um because if it was you know that's that's a bit dull really isn't it <laughs> um i think there's the, there's obviously the reassurance for people who've lost lost people and and you know they're, they're desperate for that kind of connection and to know that you know it isn't permanent if you know what i mean um yeah yeah i think i think that's important yeah. It's, it's interesting. Uh, if I talk to scientists, they, they do not poo they don't poo poo these ideas. You know, you you mentioned stars before, 
And they are ghost stars because they're not actually there anymore, are they? The light only just got here. Mm-hmm. And they, they do talk about the multiverse and all the multiverses are in the same area. Your room now is a million multiverses. Mm-hmm. So I often wonder if you're actually peering into a multiverse when you're seeing a ghost. You know, there are there are split realities and blurred realities. Mm-hmm. So there may even be a scientific grasping at these kind of ideas. Yeah, I, I, I would love, I, see, I really sit on that side. I'd, I'd love, I love sort of cold, hard theory, you know, applied to things like this, which are kind of, you know, whimsical and, you know, there's folk tales and there's the woman in black or the woman in grey or, you know, there's just all these kind of, you know, cliches of ghosts, but, um, which I also love, but I, I yeah, I genuinely think this is a, this is a thing that happens and that people don't, just don't talk about unless they're into it, unless they have a reason to talk about it. Um, I mean, I don't just meet someone and just start hopping on about ghost stories and stuff. It takes a while. It's a private thing. Um, but when I did a bit of research earlier this year, just uh, earlier last year, actually, for a project I was doing in York, um, uh, I was asking people, I just asked on my own Facebook, you know, just just to sort of, you know, just to kind of get a bit of a, you know, a little pool of, of ghost stories. And, and I heard from people that I've, I was at school with that I would never have thought would like have had any experiences let alone be like you know want to share them but they did so and quite privately and just said I've never told anyone this but this thing happened and I've always been terrified by it and I don't know what it was but I just wanted to tell you um and I just had like yeah about 50 of these amazing stories some some were kind of genuinely incredible tales you know not te- not even tales but you know real experiences um and I just thought, you know, these it's, it's, it's got to be a thing. It can't, it can't just be a figment of the imagination. You know, my, um, my manager, Steve, he's, he's, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but he, he's told me one of the most amazing stories of when he was a student and he just moved to London and he was living in a, a house. Uh, I can't remember what part of London it was. It might have been South London. Um, but he ended up having this in short he had an encounter with um the landlady of the of the of the house or the or previous owner of the house and he thought she'd just come to visit and she was came took him into his room and said this wardrobe my husband made it and you've got to look after it okay and he was like oh yeah all right all right and he had this kind of long ongoing very lucid everyday nice chat with this lady and then found out that she you know she'd passed on sort of i don't know five or ten years ago mm. Um, and I just think things like that are just lovely. They're just, I mean, what on earth is going on? But at the same time, it's just really quite reassuring, quite lovely. Yeah, it's interesting how it can manifest itself out in a very physical way like that, or it could just be a feeling, um, mm. you know, like a room could feel damp or edgy or there's something you can't, it's intangible. Yeah. And I was, I was also thinking, does that tie into the idea that that actually is more than five senses, but we don't really understand the other senses? So maybe, maybe this is our brain trying to make sense of 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 the other senses or 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 feelings that we don't quite understand. Do you, do you think that could be a, a a rational explanation of it? Or yeah, you probably. I mean, I think you have to have a. I think you know there are people that have that sense, and there are people that don't. Um, whether or not that means you can experience something or not. I mean, I don't know because because I think some of the stories that I've had would, would suggest otherwise would suggest that anybody can have this experience. Other people are more attuned to it. I'm definitely attuned to things. Um, I haven't. I mean, I've, I've definitely I've seen this thing as a kid in my parents' bedroom. It turned out I think there was a dog. The farmer lived there with a the dog or something, and the dog just you know wanted to stay around for a bit. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like I haven't actually seen anything sort of else that's kind of really definitively this experience. I'm just really fascinated by it. But um, but other people that I've spoken to have have, have, have had these really lucid experiences, and that that would be the only time in their life that they'd they'd had that happen, and they would never have, you know, they would never have sort of expected it to happen. They wouldn't have believed it to be able to happen. So yeah, I think. It's just this strange unknown, isn't it? That we just we can't. I think you're, you're right about the sort of reality sort of slipping in and out. I think, but I do. I also I also definitely believe that places can store um, 
a feeling or buildings can I've had it numerous times I've had I've walked into somewhere actually mostly in London funnily enough so underground stations where I've just felt almost like a wall of atmosphere change like walking through like a curtain of atmosphere change and just feeling ultimate dread you know just that kind of oh fuck what is that feeling like real panic and just thinking what the hell whoa, what's going on I've had it in a few music venues in London as well um and I definitely think yeah there's there's a sense somewhere that's that's or a radar or whatever it is just that picks up on these things or doesn't <laughs> Does this feed into your art and creativity? I mean, there's definitely a spook, spectral vibe to a lot of the music you make, which is quite interesting because it's music that's digital and, you know, and it's always a challenge, which a lot of people do resolve, of creating an atmosphere or a feeling around the machine, the ghost of the machine, quite literally. And is that something you're conscious of? And is that something you play around with? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean... I think the nature of my vocal is sometimes it's almost always described as haunting or ghostly. So I've never <laughs> been able to shake that. <laughs> um, it's always kind of been there. And I think it's just the atmosphere and the, yeah, the treatment, the electronic treatments I put it through, it kind of just has that eerie quality, which I just, yeah, I really thrive on it. I, I thrive on recreating that um, live or, or in the studio and performing that. Um, I think just, I'm definitely, thinking now after a few albums in just what I get out of it mostly is just there's a, there's a power to being able to create that sort of atmosphere and um it's the same as when I was little and I used to enjoy telling mates about ghosts and um you just kind of it's quite a commanding power that you can have when you're kind of scaring people so um mm. when I'm able to do that um through music it's it's even more powerful i think has my video jammed on yours it has but uh, we're still getting the audio so i can't, i was trying to work out i was going to switch my phone off in case that was um i'll, I'll just turn my camera off and on again yeah because sometimes it can overload all the all the internet can't it so yeah do you know what i think i had this problem randomly about uh a couple of weeks ago and my video just stopped working and i had to kind of turn everything off and on again so i don't know if you want to do that or not um let's get i mean we can we can it's mainly audio anyway so all right yeah and it's still i can still hear the audio uh, and okay. also we don't there's only a little bit left anyway because these things aren't, aren't meant to be super long anyways they're about 20 okay. minutes 30 minutes cool. so um yes yeah, so also also your your kind of persona your performance persona kind of shape shifts so I was just wondering if that was playing into it as well. You know, is there a, a sense of playing with reality as well, or different realities? And some of them are blur are some of them meant to be blurred realities. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Figments, figments of of a person, of a character, of a time, of a feeling. I think you could definitely place the persona that I create into that kind of ghostly other world for sure. Um, you know, they 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 are aspects of me i would say um but at the same time it's you know this kind of warping yeah this kind of warping of of elements that kind of sets it apart from just being a straight delivery if you know what i mean i mean kind of switching it around i mean would you like to come back as a ghost <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, it depends. It depends if I'm conscious or not. I sometimes wonder if there's a consciousness to them or not, but, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It depends. Maybe not on this planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> Maybe in the deep future or something or just, yeah. Or send me back in the past. I don't know. <laughs> well, and the idea that, um, you know, time doesn't really exist and there's all different times going at the same time. Do you think maybe we are all ghosts anyway? You know, there's all these kind of really bizarre theories about the universe and life and, the, you know, that's that we're at, we're actually are in the matrix and <laughs> we're yeah. all floating around in it. And does, does that all play into it as well? Or do you prefer the, the more traditional idea of, you know, like the trad ghost idea? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I think... Um, I was reading recently about um, someone who was studying, and I've forgotten their name, so I won't 
exactly that. Um, someone who was studying um, out of body experiences, out of body experiences, um, in people who'd gone through or your near death experiences and people who'd gone through operations and stuff like that. And um, they were trying to kind of just like build a bit of a, a library of, of these experiences to, to try to get a bit closer to the to the possible science behind them because they're so prevalent. Um, and it's so hard to, you know, to understand how somebody can see the process of their surgery when they're under the knife, you know, when they're under anaesthetic. So I was really just really interested in that whole idea that they put forward that, um, you know, that perhaps possibly that, you know, that our souls aren't, they're not housed in our body. They are temporarily, but they're not permanently. And it kind of, it would sort of, it would explain quite a lot, really. I mean, there's a lot of things it doesn't explain, and there's a lot of questions around that itself. But it, it, yeah, I think if, if that's a possibility, then wonderful, you know, if, if we're, if we're not just sort of limited to this sort of bag of flesh and bone, then <laughs> yeah, that's quite a beautiful, reassuring thing, isn't it? So, so in a sense, the fascination initially we talk about it was was the fascination of ideas of death, what happens afterwards. But actually, really, it's a fascination with life and what is life. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Got it on the head. Mm -hmm.